Imagine you've just finished your new t-shirt design and receive a test order in the mail. But when you open up the package, the colors of your design look way different than they did in your file. Nobody wants to experience that. Hi, I'm Achille from Gelato, and today I'll walk you through preparing the perfect print file for apparel orders. This is a crucial step in ensuring that your prints on apparel appear just like you designed them on screen. Let's get started. One of the first things you need to think about is that colors on the printed apparel item may look different than how they appear on your monitor. Every monitor displays colors differently. A combination of brightness, contrast and saturation can change color effects significantly. We recommend that you check the color settings on your monitor to ensure that the profile used has the right balance and defaults to minimize large differences in print results. Next, let's talk about colors. With digital files, each color is represented by a number or letter value. There are two most popular ways to do this, sRGB and CMYK. sRGB stands for Standard Red Green Blue and CMYK stands for Cyan, Magenta, Yellow and Black. At Gelato, we use DTG, or Direct to Garment Printing. And for this method, we always recommend that you create your design with sRGB in your image editor of choice, for example, Photoshop. If it has been created with, for example, CMYK or RGB, you will likely be able to convert it in the editor you use. Although RGB and sRGB methods may sound almost identical, they are very different. At Gelato, we have seen that using RGB rather than sRGB is one of the leading causes of colors not matching between what you see on your monitor and what is printed. Many of our customers have resolved color issues with their t-shirts by switching to sRGB, and we recommend you to do the same. Now that we've addressed using the proper color schemes, let's talk about different types of files. There are two types of image files that are commonly used in print-on-demand. Vectors, such as PDF, and bitmaps, such as JPG or PNG files. For apparel prints with Gelato, you must use JPG or PNG files with a resolution of at least 150 dpi or dots per inch. One of the biggest obstacles to a successful, high-quality apparel print comes early in the process, when a low-resolution file is submitted. We recommend image files to at least 150 dpi at full size, but ideally 300 dpi at full print size. This is to ensure that your print does not appear blurry or pixelated when printed. The full-size elements to this is key. We often get files that have a high resolution, but the actual image is a fraction of the size it is going to be printed. Gelato's design editor will show you a warning if your image resolution is below our recommendation. Another thing to keep in mind when creating your files is that files are compressed to make them easier to store, send, share and post online. There are two main types of file compression, lossy and lossless. As you might have guessed, lossy will reduce the quality of the image to varying degrees. On the other hand, lossless will leave the quality intact while still reducing the file size. Due to this, we recommend saving your image files with lossless compressions, which is applicable with PNG files. Lossy compression, which happens with JPEG files, can have little effect on the image as the data it discards is barely noticeable. But when you set your compression setting too high or resave the file over and over, things can get ugly. Now, let's focus on some tips and tricks for the best results when creating your files. When it comes to setting up a file for printing, having a transparent background is ideal. If the artwork is flat and has nice clean edges and is made of simple solid shapes, there is a lot less to worry about. Aside from using transparency just in your background, you can also use transparency for better looking designs. But what does that mean? Black ink will appear grey on black garments, 
because of the white underbase used during printing. Leave these areas fully transparent when designing for black garments. You'll want to avoid semi-transparent designs. This is because they don't print well with direct-to-garment printing. We recommend using solid colors or simulating semi-transparency by half-toning. Create designs with the necessary resolution or DPI from the beginning. Just increasing the number of pixels per resolution won't result in a better print. The best approach is to recreate the design with the necessary resolution. Before we end this video, here are some final things to keep in mind when designing your print. First, we don't print white ink on white garments. This means that any designs printed on white garments which contain white color will have areas with no print on them. Second, white ink element on bright colored garments might look tinted. This is most evident on brightly colored apparel such as red and maroon. Additionally, the color on the fabric has an effect on the print result. This is because on colored garments there is a white underbase or background printed first to provide a blank canvas for the design. Here is an example illustrating how different colors come out on white, black and different colored fabrics. Keep this in mind when designing prints you'll be using on different fabrics. I understand that was a lot of information and file design can be a pretty tricky subject. We recommend making a few test orders so that you can see exactly how the colors will look like on the product. Your gelato journey is just getting started and our team is available 24-7 to support you. Just reach out if you have any questions or need help getting started. Check out our blog on gelato.com for more tips and tricks to help you with your e-commerce journey. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to make sure you don't miss out on new videos.